This is one serious bike. The Synker 24 is for hard charging kids who want a bike that rips just like the adult version. This model is sized for riders who are between 53 and 62 inches tall. A SRAM NX 1x11 drivetrain has a wide gear ratio. No front derailleur keeps shifting simple so kids can focus on the ride. Aggressive 24 inch tires are ready to hit the dirt. They sit on burly double wall rims that will stand up to everything your kid throws at them. Rough trails are no match for the 80 millimeter Sun Tour suspension fork, allowing the rider to have fun diving into technical features. This wide handlebar gives a very stable feel. It lets the rider take a slightly wider stance, which provides more leverage, making it easier to keep on target at any speed. Hydraulic disc brakes are a must for serious riding, so of course we added those too, because having better control always ups the fun factor. Best of all, the Sinker 24 ships Ready Ride, so with just four assembly steps, you can get to the trail and ride even sooner. The Test 20 is aimed at growing kids who want nothing more than to ride their bikes over all the terrain in the neighborhood. Designed to fit average height 6 to 10 year olds, its low frame gives ample space for growing riders and allows for more confidence when mounting and dismounting. The Test 20 is built on a tough steel frame, it has a squishy suspension fork, and knobby 2 inch wide mountain tires for stability and traction. To make this bike perfect for rough road and sidewalk cruising, we've used a twist shift six speed drivetrain with just enough gears to make it up rolling hills. For smooth and controlled stopping, we added easy to use speed brakes with adjustable reach levers. Whether your kid stays around the neighborhood or wants to explore further into the woods, the Test 20 is up to the task. JB from Huffy and today we're going to be doing some quick tips and tricks on putting the handlebars and pedals on your 20 inch quick connect bicycle. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my handlebars here. This has the quick connect attachment feature on there. Looks like this here. It has kind of the, the bell housing over the stem. I've removed all of the uh, shipping material so the plastic and rubber caps are no longer in the head tube or on this part here. 
going to insert it, making sure that my brake cable is forward. And just kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle there. And then I'm going to get this six millimeter hex bolt started by hand. I like to start things by hand so I make sure I don't strip them out. Uh, if you can't get it at least uh, slightly snugged up with your fingers, uh, it's probably uh, not on the right threads and you need to try again. At this point, you'll notice that the uh, handlebars are still loose, uh, but they don't spin all the way around without taking the front wheel with it. So what we're going to do next is take a six millimeter hex wrench. And this is included in the box. Um, I'm using a aftermarket tool just for this demonstration purpose here. And we're going to tighten that up. You may hear some uh, pops and dings as this gets settled into place. And it's not completely tight yet, but you notice how uh, the amount of travel has greatly decreased between the movement of the front handlebars and the front wheel. Now I'm going to tighten this the rest of the way, getting it pretty snug, not over tightening it, uh, not you know bending the tool or or over torquing it. Now our front tire and our handlebar are aligned and your headset is connected and should not be loose in any form. Okay, so we're going to move to our pedals now. Our pedals usually have stickers on them that say left and right, but if they don't, uh, there is an easy way to tell which one's which. The right pedal has a smooth surface finish on the bolt part of the pedal near the threads that go into the crank arms. The left pedal has hash marks across the uh, mating surface there near the threads that go into the crank. So that's how you can tell which one's which. They are different threads. The left pedal is uh, a lefty tighty pedal, uh, so opposite of what most of us are used to, which is righty tighty, lefty loosey. The right pedal uh, goes on as normal as we would think, righty tighty, lefty loosey. If you're looking at the bike and you're trying to figure out which one is the left and which one is the right side, the right side of the bike is always the rider's right and it uh, has the drivetrain and the chain on that side. So the side you're looking at right now with the chain and uh, the chain guard here, this is the right side of the bike. I'm going to take my right pedal. Go ahead and tighten, get this started by hand. Nice feature about these pedals is you can use a 15 millimeter wrench just like normal, or you can use the included six millimeter tool and go from the outside and tighten. This gives you two options. Uh, it's a little bit easier to work from the outside with the uh, hex tool. So I've gotten that there, put that in, add a little torque, tighten that down, and we're good. You're going to do the same thing on the left. Remember I said this is reverse thread, so this is the lefty tighty. I'm going to do the same thing here with my six millimeter hex tool. There we go, and we're going to Add a little torque to this as well. Okay, so that is installing our pedals. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if you uh, do run into issues with strip threads or anything like that, take your time, uh, pull the pedal back off, uh, clean up any of your work area, pull out any little shavings of metal, and, and try again. Like I said, starting by hand usually solves those problems to begin with, uh, so don't just put a wrench on it right away. Uh, you can use a 15 millimeter wrench if you need to. Um, as well as the six millimeter for installing. Either way works. Uh, we just like to give you another option with this one. All right, so that is uh, putting together the pedals and handlebar on your 20 inch Quick Connect bike. So I hope this helps and enjoy your bike. Thank you for purchasing a Raleigh bike for your child. Nothing is better for making a lifelong cyclist than starting them early with a great bike. As you open the box, you'll see there is some assembly required. If you have never built a bike before, this process will probably take you up to 120 minutes. 
If you are handy with tools, expect to spend around 80 to 100 minutes. If you have done some bike wrenching before but never actually built a bike, you'll need 60 to 80 minutes. And if you are an expert bike mechanic, you can probably be finished within 30 to 60 minutes. Grab the box containing your small parts and get started. You'll need some tools for assembly, including a metric Allen wrench, bike grease, a tire pump, screwdrivers, cable cutters, and an adjustable wrench. Before you insert the seat post, smear some grease on the post to make installation and adjustments easier. Make sure you push it past the minimum insertion line. Close the quick release or tighten the seat post clamp bolt. You'll know your seat post is tight enough if you can't twist it side to side. Check that your stem is facing forward along with your fork. You may need to turn your fork forward to line them both up. If you are unsure which way the fork goes, make sure the bolts will be in front of the fork leg. Tighten the two pinch bolts evenly. The wrench should leave an imprint on your palm when it's tight enough. If your stem looks like this, it's called a quill or threaded stem. Grease the body of the quill and the bolt to make inserting and adjustment easy. Push down on the bolt head with your thumb and insert the stem past the minimum insertion line. After aligning the stem and fork forward, snug the bolt down. The wrench should leave an imprint on your palm when the bolts are tight enough. Remove the faceplate bolts and the faceplate. and center your handlebars. Tighten the bolts evenly and snugly. And check to make sure you have an equal gap on the top and bottom. To install the wheels, take the plastic caps off the wheel and loosen the bolts enough that you can fit the axle into the dropouts of the fork. Now tighten the bolts evenly by hand until they are snug, then fully tighten them with your wrench. You'll know the bolts are tight enough when the wrench leaves an imprint on your palm. If your bike comes with a quick release, slide the quick release through the hub with one conical spring on each side. Grease the threads and thread the nut on loosely. Put the front wheel in the fork and begin to tighten the quick release. When you close the lever, it should tuck up near the fork leg, and when it's tight enough, the lever will leave an imprint on your palm. After you get your front wheel on, check the back wheel for proper tightness too. All pedals are right and left specific, so be careful as to which pedal goes where. Use a small dab of grease on the threads. The right pedal goes on the side with a chain and threads in clockwise. The left pedal goes on the non-chain side and threads in counterclockwise. Snug your pedals with a pedal wrench or a thin adjustable wrench. V-brakes have two separate arms connected together by the brake cable. After threading the cable into the brake lever and through the cable housing, pass it through the brake noodle and the pinch bolt. Now center the brake pads so they contact the rim evenly. Slide the noodle into the hinged arm, then test the system and adjust as needed. If one brake pad contacts the rim before the other, tighten this adjustment screw on the opposite arm to even them out. To adjust your rear derailleur, Turn the cranks and shift the chain to the smallest cog in the back. Use the high limit screw to center the derailleur underneath the smallest cog. Undo the pinch bolt, pull the slack out of the cable, and retighten. While turning the cranks, shift up into the lowest gear. Now you can use the low limit screw to center the derailleur underneath the largest cog. To adjust your front derailleur, shift into the smallest chain ring in the front and the largest cog in the back. Use the low limit screw to position the inner plate as close as you can to the chain without touching it. Loosen the pinch bolt to pull the slack out of the cable and retighten. 
while turning the cranks, shift up into the largest chain ring in the front and the smallest cog in the back. Now you can use the high limit screw to position the outer plate of the derailleur as close to the chain as you can without touching it. Put the red reflector on the seat post and the white one on your handlebars. Safety first. Cut any extra cable down with your cutters and pinch a cable end on with your pliers to keep the cable from braying. If your bike has plastic bolt caps, push those on to protect your rider. Then pump up the tires following the guidelines on the sidewalls. You'll also want to double check the tightness of the seat post and handlebars. Then your little one is ready to go for a ride.